Happy Sabbath, everyone. Just a few things I want to highlight before we get into the Word of God this morning. And uh, that is on the 17th of this month, there are several things that's going to be happening as was stated in the announcements. We're going to have communion service that morning. And then in the evening will be the memorial service for uh, Brother Mark Morris's father at 5 o'clock. And then that same day, or during the vine service, I am happy to announce, and, and some of you have gotten to know her. Um, she's been visiting with us. We've been studying with her. And she's made the decision to uh, join our church as a member, Sister uh, Joni is Brog Brogman. Brogman. Yeah, Brogan. So let's, say, let's have an amen for Sister Brogan. And so we, she'll be joining by profession of faith, by profession of faith. And so we're so happy that she's made that decision. And so uh, take some time to get to know her. She's a, a, great, a great lady. Um, and I also want to highlight, and we're going to emphasize this every single week, on this, through the, seventh, the week of the 17th to the 22nd of July, we're going to be going, our church will have a booth at the Warren County Fair. I think it's going to be held in Lebanon. And we're continuing to seek more ways to get our church out of the four walls and into the community by different ways. And so we're going to take this time to set up a booth. And that's, that, that time is going to be used for witnessing, sharing, telling people about God, uh, telling people about our church, uh, what we're all about, what Seventh-day Adventism is all about. And we never know what will come out of it. We don't know who's out there searching. We don't know who's out there um, looking for more. We don't know who's out there. And we will not get an opportunity to know who's out there if we don't first put ourselves out there. Amen? All right, I think the church is sleeping. So I'm a, let's say, we won't know who's out there unless we put ourselves out there and be a witness for Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 All right. That's better. Okay. We'll have lunch afterwards. All right. So for that being said, we are looking for volunteers. We want, all, we want everybody to volunteer, but we know everybody needs to check their schedule, what times work for them. We have a sheet with the times each day that we're asking people to volunteer and come out. Take a sheet. It's out there on the desk. Look at your schedule. See what works for you. Fill it out. And then you can return it to myself or you can return it to Nancy and OK. They're not here today, but I, I think most of us, if not all of us, know who Nancy and OK are. This is a part of building up the kingdom of God. The Bible talks, one man reaps, another man does what? So, we have to be faithful in our part when it comes to both reaping and when it comes to both sowing. And we don't know, you know, I'm going to take this time just to share a testimony. I met, I, I met with uh, Sister Joni this week, Elder, Ju uh, Elder Julian and I. And we were talking, we were asking her, how, you know, how did you come across the Adventist Church? Sister Joni said, and Brother Mark, you're going to smile when you hear this. She was a part, she went to those prophecy seminars that happened some years ago that you guys had, I think it was in uh, Sharonville, all right? And now she's here. Can we praise the Lord? Amen. We don't know what's going to happen when we have an interaction with somebody. They may join tomorrow. They may join next year. They may join 10 years for them. You know what? And that's not our concern. Our concern is, are we being faithful in sharing the word of God? And so, 
I am excited about this opportunity to continue to build up our contact list and friends that we have in the community so that when we have things that we want to invite people to, we have people that we can call and they can say, you know what, I know that church, that's a good church. I know the people in that church. I know the word, I know they have the word of God. I want to learn more from them. So please, take uh, a sheet, pray about it, look at your schedule and see which day is good for you. Day or days are good for you in sharing the word and being a witness. Let us go back to the scripture reading in, in um, Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. I'm going to read the first six verses for you. Jeremiah chapter 18. Starting from verse 1. The Bible says this. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the porter's house. And I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the porter's house and there he was making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of God, the word of the Lord, which came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? says the Lord, look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. For the next few moments, we're going to look at the subject, remade in the potter's house. Let us pray. God and Heavenly Father, we take this time, dear God, to prepare our hearts for your word. And I ask now, dear God, that you empty me of everything of the sinful human nature. And you fill me with your Holy Spirit. May you speak through me. And may only your voice and your words be heard today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remade in the potter's house. I want to ask the question today that most of us have probably asked ourselves from time to time. Why is there so much wickedness, immorality, lawlessness, and violence in the world? I know some of us have probably asked ourselves, if there is a God and he is sovereign, if he rules over and controls all the events in the universe, then why? Does he allow evil to exist? These are questions that, that we have asked, that people have asked down through the ages. And the scripture that we are going to look at this morning presents a well-known story of the potter and the clay. A story that deals with the issues, the issue of God's sovereignty, power, and free will over the people. Most likely, Jeremiah preached the message of the potter and the clay in the early part of King uh, Je Je Jehoiakim's reign. And this king despised the Lord. He despised his word. And he despised his prophets. So much so that at some point during his 11 year reign, he actually burned Jeremiah's sermons and his writings in an attempt to stamp out the word of God. My friends, I want to share with you this morning that when God gives you a word, when God speaks to you, 
When God calls on you to stand up for him, we cannot be afraid of any challenge, of any evil that may present itself just because it may be an obstacle in sharing the word of God. Just like Jeremiah stood up and preached the word of God, so should we stand up and continue to be witnesses on behalf of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the word of God came to Jeremiah and he told Jeremiah to, to arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my word. We cannot be afraid to get up and go whenever God calls us. We must be able to hear the word of God. And so when Jeremiah hears the word of God and he gets up and goes and he goes and he goes to the potter's house, he sees some things that was happening there. He sees a potter sitting down. He sees a potter sitting down and, and, and working with clay. Working with clay at the wheel. He sees a clay in the hands of a potter being shaped and being molded and being used. He sees some things and he realizes that this is about the children of Israel. One thing, one lesson that we can learn as we come from and as we learn about the potter and the clay is that we are all made of the same clay. We are all made from the dirt. We are all made from the ground. We are all made from dust. Dust, we came into this world, and dust, we shall return. All of us have evil hearts and a sinful nature. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All must give an account to God. All are subject to temptation. All must die and should be, pre be prepared to die. All of us come from the same thing. But here's the thing that we have to realize. E uh, even though we all come, even though we all fall short of the glory of God, we all receive the salvation from Jesus Christ and so because of the sameness of mankind the sameness of mankind calls for us to understand others God didn't call us to be judgy of one another God, God didn't call us to look down on one another because of our sameness we have to understand one another. We're not to judge each other by race or ethnicity or by your faith. We're not to judge each other by that. We are to judge each other in grace. We are to give and extend grace to everybody because we ourselves need grace more and more abundantly. He went to the potter's house. Over 30 words in, in Hebrew, in the Hebrew vocabulary, relate directly to pottery. Because the manufacturer of, the, of pottery was a major industry in the Near East in that day. Jeremiah had passed uh, through the potter's house many times before. But this time, God has a special message for him that after he preached it, would put him in jail. When you follow the Lord, you never know what will happen to you next. But we're not to be concerned about what's going to happen to us if we preach the word of God, if we share the word of God. We are to be concerned only about how God can continue to use us. Jeremiah went down to the house. And I can imagine as he passed the house, he never thought once about what was happening inside of the potter's house. Time after time again, he passed the potter's house and he sees the potter inside of the house making clay. He passes again and he sees the potter inside of the house making clay. And he passes again and he sees the potter inside of the house making clay. Until one day God says, enough passing by the house. You need to go into the house and understand what the potter is doing with that clay. Time and time again, we avoid 
avoid pass we avoid God directly by passing by God's house passing by spending time with him passing by spending time having worship with him building up a relationship with him and instead of passing by him we need to hear the voice of God and come directly to the porter's house so that he can continue to make us into what he needs us to be Sometimes we get so scared of what the voice of God has to say to us that we end up hiding from the voice of God. Sometimes we get so nervous about where God is sending us that we, that we try our best to avoid hearing the voice of God. Sometimes we are so afraid of the message that God has for us when we read the word of God, when we spend time with God. Sometimes we get so afraid of what God has said to say to us directly that we do our best to run away from the word of God. But I want to let you know something today, my brothers and sisters. It's only so much running that you can do away from God. We have to go directly to him so that we can hear his word. The Bible says in verse 4 that the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter the vessel the bible says was marred now when you look at this in the original language it's 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 interesting to note what it means because if you were to pay attention or or if you were to look at it one would automatically think that the way that the that the potter was shaping the vessel that the, vest, that the vessel became marred because of what the potter was doing to it. But in the original language, that's not the case. In the Hebrew, what it actually is saying is that the vessel was marred not because of what the potter did. The vessel was marred because of the defects that, were, that originally existed within the vessel itself. Follow me today this morning, my brothers and sisters. We are made, the Bible says, we are all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. There are things that are a part of our lives, that are a part of our characteristics, that are a part of our beings that does not look good to us. To the naked eye, to the people around us, they don't know what's all going on in our private lives. To the people around us, they don't know about the struggle that we have. To the people around us, they don't know about the situations that we face. To the people around us, they don't know about the times that we cry in our rooms at night because of the stress that we have. But, when, but we know what happens. We know of our own personal defects. We know of our own personal issues. We know of our own personal situations. And we sometimes end up falling apart and being destroyed because of the issues that we have within ourselves. But the Bible says that the porter took the clay that was, that was defiled, that was broken, that was marred, and instead of him throwing it away and using a new piece of clay, the Bible says that the porter took that same piece of clay and reshaped it into something better that he saw fit. I wish my brothers and sisters in the church today can praise God that God never threw us away. You see, when, while he was working with it, something happened. But he took it and made it again. And I saw this firsthand for myself before. In my college days, I went and I spent six weeks uh, in Montemorelos uh, at the Adventist University in, in Montemorelos. And one of those days, they took us around the campus. And on the campus, there was a, there was a pottery building. And in the pottery building, you can see the machines that they use to shape. They sit down at the wheel and they spin the wheel and you have your clay in it and you have to make it whether into a bowl or a cup or whatever it is that you want to make it into. 
And when they sit down and they make it, you tell, you can tell, and you see when something goes wrong. Maybe it gets a little wobbly. Maybe there's a little, maybe something goes awry and, and it didn't come out the way that they wanted to. And I remember clearly they said, you know, when something goes wrong with the clay, you never waste the clay and throw it away. You always take that same clay and you can continue to remake that clay because there is nothing wrong with that clay. Brothers and sisters, no matter what you may have gone through in your life, no matter what sin exists in your life, no matter what your past life used to be like, no matter what your present life looks like today, God will continue to remake you because it's not about your past. It's not about your present. It's about the future that God has in store for you. The potter's plan is best for the piece of clay. God has a plan for every life. And the first plan that he has for your life is the plan of salvation he wants you to be saved that's the whole point he wants you to be saved and the unfolding of the plan of salvation involves one thing for you to be willing to surrender your life in order to be shaped and molded and, and, and for him to fulfill that plan in your life. Because you are his workmanship. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 10. Verse 8 uh, through 10 says, For grace you have been saved through faith, that not yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The picture of the potter and the clay is appropriate because a potter can do what he wants with the clay. Wet clay is malleable. A skilled craftsman can shape it into almost anything. Just the slightest adjustment of the thumb or fingers changes the contours of a pot. The potter has complete mastery over the clay. Let me speak to my, uh, my older young people in the church today. How many of us know about Bob Ross? All right. Oh, you know about Bob Ross, right? Big Af the, the, the Afro guy. Uh, he was on PBS and he paints. He used to paint. You know, and sometimes, this is what Bob Ross did. Whenever he made a mistake, he would just smile. And he would say, there's no such thing as mistakes, but happy accidents. And, 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 and follow me now, and he would say that. And he would take what looks like a mistake, and he would turn that painting into a wonderful masterpiece. Now, now. When it comes to the mastery and the craftsmanship of Jesus Christ, when it comes to the mastery and craftsmanship of God, there is no accidents. There are no mistakes. God does not make a mistake in your life. You are not a mistake, but you are a wonderful creation made in the image of God. We have to live like it. We have to believe it. We have to carry ourselves as such to know that even though people may doubt you, even though people may turn their backs on you, even though people may put, put you down because of where you come from, what mat the people's opinions does not matter. What only matters is what Jesus Christ thinks of you and the purpose that he has for you. He has a plan for you. The preacher, Charles S. Spurgeon, he said this, he says, when a potter is about to make a vessel, you must not imagine that he 
takes up the mere clay and puts it on the wheel and then leaves it into the it leaves it to chance as to what shall be made of it no he has a plan before he sits down to labor he knows what kinds of what kind of vessel he is about to make so it is with our divine porter who is in heaven he takes the poor sinner as a mass of clay he puts him on the wheel and as the wheel revolves the porter looks and sees in the clay a future something that does not appear to the vessel but only appears to the great workman's eyes we may truly say of each, each of each of us who know the lord that what we will be has yet not been revealed and what shall be never will appear until we see christ as he is and be like him the porter however knows what we are to be our father who is in heaven will not be deceived at last as to what he will make of the people he has a plan and that plan i think i may read to you in these few words he will present us not having a spot or a wrinkle or any such thing so when god just as how the potter remade the vessel, God can remake us. He says, God says directly to Jeremiah, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in my hands. When a vessel was ruined, it was reused. It was made better than new. The work was started afresh. And the clay became the shape that he wanted to. The Lord has an undoubted power over you and I. And he has a just right to change our state as he pleased. He can change our state in sin. He can change our state in turmoil. He can change our state in distress. He can change our state in temptation. God can change your state from broken and ill to mended and healed. So you should not have any reason to complain of God. Especially when we have marred ourselves by our own sin. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 9 says, Does a clay pot dare argue with its maker, a pot that is like all others? Does the clay ask the potter, what is he doing? Does the pot complain that, that its maker has no skill? We are in God's hands. God asked him. The potter. House of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter did with the clay? That's a rhetorical question. Because who in their right mind will say, no, God, you can't do that to me? Yes, God is the sovereign of us all. Just as how the potter did that to the clay, God can change us into what he has us to be. But we have to have faith. We cannot be afraid to be used and shaped and remolded just like the clay. Now here's the thing that we have to learn and understand from this passage. When you read further, you realize that God is giving the children of Israel an option. God is letting them know, listen, if you allow me to reshape you, if you allow me to remake you, if you allow me to shape you into what you need to be and to be used, what you will find in your life, your future is one of blessings. But if we find ourselves to be stubborn, 
where we hear the word of God but don't answer it. Where we hear God's word but fail to go after it. God tells Jeremiah to tell the children of Israel, you're going to have a hard time. There's going to be judgment. You see, it's not our job as the clay to tell the potter how to make us. It's our job to just sit there and be made. To let God use us and shape us. Because, because he has a plan for us. I'm going to invite Sister Danielle and Janelle to sing a special song for me. Let's meditate on the words. Because God wants us to be used to our fullest potential.